Unlimited program created by Rio Grande. State Bureau of Narcotics calling all cars, attention all cars, to broadcast 288 regarding illicit drugs. It's just narcotic agents. That's all. Rolls and clues. Grande has forsaken the beaten path and blazed a new trail with a revolutionary new gasoline, embodying twice as many expertly combined ingredients as found in ordinary fuel. It is a scientifically perfect blend of gasoline, crack, poly, straight run, casing head, stabilizer, and tetraethyl. Each one gives your car a different kind of power. And you can't get perfect performance without all types of gasoline blended in the right proportion to provide it. It was tested and proved by the exacting drivers of police, fire, and emergency equipment in the cities and counties of California who found it to fulfill all their demanding requirements. No wonder thousands of new customers have joined with the army of regular Rio Grande patrons during these last three weeks of its introduction. Get this liquid dynamite at your red and white Rio Grande station in the morning. I can personally promise you that you can feel the improved performance when this new cracked gasoline hits your carburetor. The facts around which tonight's story has been built were taken from the file of the Bureau of Narcotics in San Francisco. We have therefore asked Mr. Paul E. Madden, Chief of the State Narcotic Bureau, to open our program from the studios of KSFO. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There may be harder jobs than breaking up a narcotic ring. I don't know. I've never seen one. Especially difficult is the job of rounding up a band of narcotic peddlers, including the brains of the gang. Narcotic sellers are not always users, and usually the organization back of the ring extends to many countries. The capture of such a group is a long and arduous process, one that requires many hours of painstaking labor and much money. I have found definitely, however, that no matter... How smart a man thinks he is when he starts out to sell dope, he is never smart enough to get away with it long. Like all criminals who try to get by the law, he learns sooner or later that he can't win. Additional facts will be given you at the end of the program that will prove most conclusively that crime cannot pay. San Francisco. Cold, dank fog that swirled and eddied about the close packed streets of Chinatown. Amoeba like blobs of humanity drifted through the murky gloom. In a doorway, a hag of a woman waited, sniffling, shifting uneasily, peering perplexed into the gloom. The faint tread of footsteps came cautiously toward her, paused. The shabby figure of a man loomed out of the fog. How much? Two pindles. Here. Two bucks. But there's junk. Buck and a half's my limit. Oh, how's a lady going to make a living? That ain't nothing to me. That's all I'll pay. Okay, okay. Give me it. Yeah. Dollar bill to quarter. He pressed the crumped bill and two coins into her hand and received two small envelopes. He slipped out of the doorway and was swallowed up in the fog. The hag waited a second or two, then emerged from the black hole of the building and headed along the pavement in the opposite direction. Suddenly, out of the murk, two figures swung into step beside the woman. Steel fingers tightened on her arm. Say, uh, what's coming off here? Take it easy, sister. You're under arrest. 
for I ain't got nothing. Narcotic agents don't go around picking up people who haven't done anything. They just sold two bindles of morphine for a dollar and a half. That money's marked. Marked? That's right. Okay, mister. You got me. I know when the jig's up. I'm glad you realize that. Oh, but listen, I'm just small fry. Why don't you go after the big shot? What do you think we're doing? Playing pinochle? Oh, gee, mister. I'm just a measly bindle pusher. I don't know nothing. Maybe. What's your name? Nelson. Edith Nelson. Honest, mister, I don't know nothing. I'm just a bindle pusher. It wasn't bindle pushers the narcotic department wanted. It was the brains back of this ever-increasing flow of narcotics that state and federal agents sought. For two years now, this stuff has been coming in. We've got to find out where it comes from and where it goes to after it gets there. You're right, Mr. Smith. I've been on the case that long myself. You all, you and Spain picked up this Nelson woman last night, didn't you? Yes, sir. We've been picking up small fried peddlers for months. And all the morphine we get is the same kind. This stringy, cottony stuff made the Japanese way. Every bit we see is the same. It's a safe bet, then, that it comes from the same source, even from the same factory. But it's the uh, label on this can that puzzles me. Here, look at it. 412 grains, huh? Yeah, that's right. But take a good look at that printing of the three gold stars and those Chinese characters. That's the same as on all the other tins we picked up around San Francisco. Exactly. And it's too good a job of printing to be done in China. You mean it's being done here? That's just what I do mean. That's the clue I'd bet on it. Now, what did you get out of this Nelson woman? Practically nothing. She claims she gets her stuff from Annie the Dope. Well, sounds like a dime novel. Well, bring her in. Let's see what her story is. Now, Annie, you might as well tell what you know. Or you'll stay in jail from now on. But I don't know nothing, I tell you. It's a little guy in this racket. It's like Edie Nelson. Yeah, we know. You're just small fry. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Where do you get the bindles you peddle? <laughs> think I'd tell you? I think so. You see, we took the liberty of removing that spare shot you'd save for your own use. Here it is. You heel. Give me that. Take it easy, Annie. You want to talk? No. It's going to be awfully tough when you need this shot and you can't get it. Well, well will you give me it if I talk? We'll see that you're given treatment that'll help you, Annie. Yeah. How do I know I can trust you guys? What do you got to lose? You're in jail anyway. Well, I... Um, different thing. Get my junk from Flo Wallace. Wallace, huh? Where does she get it? How do I know? You want to get a break for yourself, Annie? Sure. How'd you like to make a buy from Flo Wallace with marked money? It might make things easier for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I need a shot. Let's go. The Spain and Hall trailed Annie the dope through circuitous streets to a run-down apartment building in the cheap section of San Francisco. She paused, held up three fingers. Apartment three there. They waited for her to disappear into the vestibule, then moved cautiously after her. In the entryway, a dirty card bore the name Wallace. They went down a dreary hall and paused outside the door. Inside, they heard Annie whine. Oh, listen, Flo. I've got to have some in. You've got lots of it. Here, you got the money? Of course I got the money. Here. Okay, take it, Doc. Okay, let's take her. What's the big idea busting into a lady's good war like this? My cutting agents, Miss Wallace. Why, Annie, you dirty double crossing hussy out of. Relax. You ought to take it easy. That's the best way. Uh, listen, why pick on me, wise guys, ain't you? Maybe. Well, ain't a bigger fish in the pond? Could be. Couldn't bring yourself to tell us who they are, could you? What do you think I am, a pink? What do you got to lose? Well, why should I be a sap? Well, you know the answer to that one better than we do. Oh, uh, okay. What say you? I get my stuff from Earl Rex. Rex, huh? Yeah, he's a big distributor. Listen, we know the narcotics set up in this district as well as anybody else. And we never heard of him. Well, if it's anything to you, he'll be here at 10 o'clock to collect the dough I get from the bindle pushers and make another delivery. Thanks. We'll wait for him. Forgot to tell you. It's 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay, we'll be here. Paul and Despain knew the Wallace woman was shrewd. They realized that they ran the chance of having her tip off the higher up. That was a chance they had to take. All night they kept a watch on the apartment. From dark hideouts they watched the parade of frowsy hags and shifty eyed, sallow faced men come and go. Shortly after nine o'clock the next morning, Holland de Spain rang the bell of Flo Wallace's apartment. What's the big idea? I said ten o'clock. Skip it. And no funny 
business when Rex gets here. It was nearly 10.15 when the doorbell rang again. Quickly, the two narcotic agents slipped into a closed closet. From the partly open door, they could survey the room and its occupants. Low Wallace crunched out a cigarette and rose lazily and opened the door. Hello. Come on in. I'm expecting somebody else. Who? A couple of guys. A couple of guys? Yeah, what's the matter with you? Hopped up? No, no, nothing's the matter with me. You're jittery. These guys are big shots. You need more bindles, don't you? Sure. Sure, sure I need it. Maybe this is what we've been waiting for. I hope so. I'm getting tired of this case. That guy Rex is just a small fry, too. Yeah, we've had him lots of times. Any different names, though. Hi, Far. A little late, ain't you? Maybe. Here's the junk. Okay. Here's the dough. Hey, what's in that closet? Narcotic agents. We'll take over now, if you don't mind. Oh, no, you don't. Get him, all. Oh. All right, break it up, all of you. Get him up. So you double-crossed this, did you, Flo? The locust will take care of you for this. Well, here's our friend who tried to get away, and here's his soap he brought along. Hmm. Three-star brand, huh? And the same printing that we found on those other labels. Rex, you said something about the locust. What did you mean by that, Rex? Nothing. And which one of these birds do you work for? Far. The one you caught. Now, who's your silent friend here? Julius, to you, smart guy. It's going to be tough, are you? Stick around. He'll do that, Julius, for a long time. At last, the officers felt that they had made progress in the smashing of the West's most gigantic narcotic ring. They had heard rumors of the mysterious Black Locust. Which of these men was the Locust? Then, while the trio languished in jail, came one of those breaks that often proved so important to the law enforcement officials. You know, it's a funny thing about that fellow Julius. That's so? What's strange about him? Well, you know that woman that comes in here to see him every Thursday day? Yeah, I've seen her. Well, all they do is quarrel all the time she's here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, women are peculiar sometimes. What do they quarrel about? I don't know. They never raise their voices so I can hear them. Never heard them say anything, huh? Nope. Julius is always awfully nervous after she leaves, though. What's her name? June. Emma Cune. <laughs> Not so bad looking, either. How often has she been here? Well, every visiting day since he's been here. And they always quarrel, huh? That's right. I think I'll have a talk with Julius. Okay. Now, who's the woman, Julius? Just a friend of mine. Always quarreling with you, huh? So what? Still doing it the hard way, are you, Julius? Listen, copper, you got me wrong. I'm just small fry on this racket. I've heard that one before, too. Honest, I'm just a punk that works for that dame, the one who comes in here to see me. Expect me to believe that? I don't care whether you believe it or not. It's the truth. I ain't no big shot in this ring. What does that get me? You want to break this case, don't you? Sure. Why do you think we picked you up? Well, I'm giving you a right steer. I work for that dame. I got 27 ounces of morphine. It belongs to her. That's why she keeps coming in here griping. Where is the stuff? In my apartment. I got it hid. Okay. Next time she comes in here, you make a deal to deliver the stuff. What'll it get me? Just the same as if you didn't do it. Thanks. You want to know who she works for? You want to do it or not? Okay, I'll go for it. Maybe the judge will have more sense than you coppers. Maybe he'll give me a break. Maybe. When do you want to do it? Any time. What can I lose? The delivery was made, and the department found another storming woman on its hands. All right, Blackfoot. Now you've got me. What are you going to do about it? Might do a lot. 27 ounces of morphine can do many things to you, Emma. Listen, fellas. I was a little hasty. I'm just small fry in this room. Yeah, we know. You just sell it to somebody else. Yeah, that's right. Who is it this time? John Lilly. Well, he's a new one. What does he do besides import dope? He don't import it. He just sells it. Where does he get it? Oh, don't ask me. I just work for him. What does he do besides sell dope? Well, he's a ticket taker at a theater down in Chinatown. Well, that's just a blind, though. He really works for a fellow named Chung. Johnny's a contact man for him. Okay, Emma, we'll run down these leads. If they're hot, it may help you. If they're not, uh, we'll talk to you some more. Meantime, here's yourself. Bain and Hall picked up Lily's trail at the Chinese theater. When he stopped at the newsstand for his evening paper, the man close by was a narcotic agent. They rode the streetcar with him. They kept watch on his house while he slept. But John Lilly did nothing suspicious. 
One night after the close of the performance, they saw him come out of the theater and start deep into Chinatown. They trailed him along the narrow, crooked street. At last, he halted before a house, shot a nervous glance behind him, then disappeared inside. Two hours later, he came out again and made his way back home. But other agents remained on guard before the house of Chung. Next morning, the officers picked up the trail of John Malia again. There he stands, just in front of the library. Look, there's a fellow talking to him. I see him. He just got out of that limousine. Who oh, is that guy? I never saw him before, but he seems to know Lily. Oh, for the love of Mike, are we a bunch of dummies? Oh, up all the rotten luck. Look at that. They're getting in the car. Yeah, we're caught flat-footed. No car, not a taxi in sight. Yeah, I guess there's nothing to do but go back to Chinatown and pick up this trail at the theater again. Well, let's stick around a minute or two. He may come back. Ten minutes later, Lily did come back. On foot. Again, he loitered in the library doorway. I hate to say him. Take a look at our dope peddling friend. That dark guy's back again, I see. He's giving Lily a set of keys. There's something funny going on between those two. Uh-uh. He's putting up. Come on. We're not going to let him get away this time. And it's about time to take him? No use waiting any longer. He's selling the junk so we might get a line on the locus we pick Lily up. I don't think he might be the head man. Not a chance. First of all, he works for the man who owns the theater, Chung. We're going to find out who Chung works for. Lily's stopping at the car. That's the same limousine he got into a while ago. Well, we'd better grab him quick, then. Come on. Okay, John, this what? is it. What's the trouble? What's going off here? Well, this is known technically as an arrest. We're a narcotic agent. We'd like to look at that package you just took out of that car. This ain't my car. We're not worrying about that. We want to see what's in that package. You can do this to me. You ain't got no warrant. We won't need one. Are you going to open it here, or do we have to take you in? Okay, copper. Look at it. My, my. Ten three-ounce cans of morphine. With the three-star brand labels on them. Yeah, you can read, too. Hey, whose car is this? Don't ask me. Well, we are asking you. We'll try and find out then. That's simple enough. This registration slip says Judah Ezra. Ezra? That doesn't make sense. Why not? What's the address? Brick Department, Knob Hill. I thought so. He's one of the most prominent apartment house brokers in San Francisco. Well, all I know is what I read on the registration slip. Say, wait a minute. Maybe we're on the trail of something. Let's take a look at Mr. Ezra. Maybe the car is stolen. That's what I'm afraid of. With the society background Ezra's got, I'm inclined to believe that's the answer. Well, shall we take Mr. Lilly in? Might as well. Then we'll call on Mr. Ezra. Nice jump he's got here. Yeah. It's taken that mate a long time to find Ezra. Are you gentlemen asking for me? Are you uh, Judah Ezra? Yes, I am. You're under arrest. Arrest? Oh, what charge? Violation of the State Narcotic Act. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Maybe so. But when you left John Lilly in front of the library a couple of hours ago, we followed him to the car that you'd been driving. And in it, we found 30 ounces of morphine. That doesn't look so ridiculous at the time. Oh, there must be some mistake. I don't know a man named Lilly. We'll take a chance that we're right. Do you mind if we look over the apartment? Or do you want us to get a search warrant? Help yourself. You'd better lead the way. We'd like to see your personal papers first. Oh, certainly, certainly. Follow me. You're from Shanghai, I believe, Mr. Yes, that's correct. I was reared there. You been here long? Oh, two years. But I thought you government agents were omniscient. Uh, you should know how long I've been here. Have you a key to this desk? Oh, certainly. Hey, who's W.D. Gray? Huh? I haven't the slightest idea. Where'd you get that name? From this receipted bill for printing. Here's a warehouse receipt made out to the same man. And you don't know who W.D. Gray is? Most certainly not. Remember what Inspector Smith said when we started on this case? Mm. It's a good job of printing. Too good, in fact, to have been done in China. Maybe we struck pay there. It's about time. Come along, Mr. Ezra. We found 30 ounces of morphine in your automobile. I think that evidence enough to warrant holding you? The agents were not impressed by Mr. Ezra's protestations of innocence, nor by the storm of sensational journalism that followed the arrest of the socially prominent smuggler. Meantime, the Spain and Hall hurried to the printing plant, which had issued the receipt found in Ezra's apartment. Are you the manager of this plant? Yep. This one of your statements? I see. Sure, that's mine. Well, any chance of you remembering what this receipt covered? Oh, wait a minute, and I'll look it up. It's pretty important that we be able to trace this. If somebody hasn't taken the stuff out of the file, we have a copy of the work that receipt covered. Here it is. W.T. Gray, 1,000 labels, three-star brand. It's some Chinese character 
letters on it, too. See? Uh-huh. You remember this man, Gray? Yes, I did a lot of work for him. He was in here often. Is this a picture of him? No, I don't think so. No, I, I'm sure that's not the man. Who is this? A fellow named Judah Ezra. Looks an awful lot like Gray, but it's not him. Well, thanks a lot, anyway. Sorry, mister. Wish I could help you. Making their way to the Kansas Street warehouse, Paul and his fame contacted the man in charge. I'm checking up on some shipments stored here by a W.D. Gray. You know him? Sure. Does a lot of business here. What kind of business? He's connected in some way with the Dalaloon Tea Company. Stores a lot of stuff here from time to time. Any of it here now? No, nothing but some empty tongue oil drums. Uh, we'll look at them later, if you don't mind. It's okay with me. Uh, here's a picture. Is this the man, Gray, you've been doing business with? Don't think so. You're not sure, though? Nope, I'd say that's not Gray. Oh, does it resemble him? Yes, I'd say it does. It's an awful lot like Gray, but it's not him. Okay. Let's take a look at those oil drums. Sure, they're right back here. Last shipment came in on the Chichibu Maru on March 7th. And it's all gone? Yep. Gets it in 25 to 50 drum lots. Sells it fast, too. <laughs> I bet he does, is that? And there's the drum. You come over. Thank you. Well, that one looks all right. Yeah. Let's look at the rest of them. Uh-oh. There it is. That's it. Whoever W.D. Gray is, he's the man we want. What's the matter? Here, yeah, take a look. See that drum inside the outer barrel? Yeah. That's the place used to smuggle dope. Mm. This shipment alone could conceal three quarters of a million dollars worth of drugs. Hey, wait a minute. This gives me an idea. Now, what is it? Well, now I know where this bird, Judah Ezra, connects up in my mind. This guy used to live in Shanghai. He had a twin brother who came over here about ten years ago. He's a big shot society man, too. Bird owns a flock of swanky apartments. For the love of Mike, why didn't we think of this before? Let's get hold of our agents in Shanghai. Maybe we can get a line on these babies. Isaac Ezra was arrested. He, too, protested his innocence, but in rapid succession, he was identified. Sure, that's the guy that got those labels from me, said the warehouse man. Yep, that's W.D. Gray, all right. I don't know anything about a bird named Ezra, but he's the fellow that told me his name was Gray. Lily looked at the two Ezra brothers and said, Judah is the guy Chung works for. Isaac is the bird that imports the stuff. But though this was evidence in the minds of the officers, there was a doubt that it would hold in court. Then came cablegrams from Shanghai. The drug peddling work of the brothers Ezra had begun years before in New York. Well, Jim, we got some more of the stuff coming through from France. You're going to get stuck with this stuff someday. I don't trust them monkeys in Paris. Oh, I don't worry, my friend. I know what I'm doing. I've got an entire shipment, more than a million dollars worth, coming in on the next boat. For crime any sakes, you mean you're shipping it open like that? Ah, don't be foolish. Of course not. It's in milk cans. Oh, ain't that nice. Morphine-treated milk. Are you crazy? I didn't say it was in milk. I said milk cans. It'll be here tomorrow. You wait and see for yourself. All right, Jim. Here we are. Now, now take a look. Here we open a can like this. Uh, and we find inside it another can. Like this. You mean all these here cans has got junk in them? Like this? That's right. Now we'll open the inside can. Must have cost a lot of jack. <laughs> my friend, you've no idea. I spent my last sou for this shipment. Jeez. What the... Hey, what's up, Chief? The can. It's full of rags. Rags? Here, yeah, look at it. I'm ruined. Oh, boss, they really double-crossed you. I told you you shouldn't ought to trust them guys. As long as I draw a breath, I'll search for the men who did this to me. If it takes a lifetime, I'll get my revenge. honor of his warped genius, the East had dubbed Judah Ezra the Black Locust. Now the East laughed. The Locust had been plagued. The Oriental underworld laughed, but not so, teasing so. My friend of dubious integrity, you let little things like the snap of finger upset you. You call $120,000 in junk a snap of the finger? But that was long ago. The wise one has said, if one would see the sun, look where the sun is. So what? It is now in the east. Uh, what's all this rubbish about? I refer to the rising sun. Yeah? The people to the east are a very material people. Uh -huh. There are great 
profits to be made from morphine. Uh, morphine from our Chinese poppy uh, yeah. and heroin. Yeah. And uh, if there are cocoa leaves available, we shall have cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, there is always opium. Uh, yes. And, of course, the tender leaves of these plants could be best handled by a company already handling these. <laughs> uh, uh, such as the Da Lung Tea Company. Exactly, my friend. The Da Lung Tea Company is... is uh, in the drug manufacturing business. Yes, and where do I come into this picture? I think it would be more patriotic and less dangerous if we sold our product to some other nation. Such as? If I had a wealthy and not too scrupulous brother in a foreign land. I might visit him. Ah, yes. That's an excellent idea. There was another excellent idea. <laughs> One of your own. Yes? Yeah. The milk can scheme. That was not bad. <laughs> it didn't work out so well for me. But it could be used if barrels were substituted for milk cans. <sighs> and if tung oil were placed in the barrels. Ah, yes. And if they were consigned to a reputable dealer in the United States. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> That's right. Who knows? Or whoever will know. Thus, the black book of the Federal Narcotic Bureau did not furnish a clue when the flood of dope began to pour into the Pacific coast. The men behind the ring had no gangland connection. They moved in the best circles, mingled with the best people. They used no gangster methods. But now the picture had changed. At last, narcotic officials had traced directly to one of the Ezra brothers the consigned shipment of goods. Then, one day, Inspector Smith called Hall and Spain into his office. You want us, Chief? Here's a message that just came through from Shanghai. Well, this doesn't look like anything but a bunch of double talk to me. Well, that's what it looked to me until I related to Washington. Oh, Mrs. Friedman got hold of it, huh? Yes, and how? She worked it in a couple of hours and then shut it back. Here's the translation. Hmm. Our shipment goes today at San Maru. It consists of 520 tins smoking opium. Boy, that's a load of junk. And 20 sample tins. Must be trying out a new kind. Take a look at the rest of the stuff they're shipping. 70 ounces cocaine, 70 ounces morphine, and 40 ounces heroin. For the love of Mike. That's $300,000 worth of junk wholesale. And worth more than $2 million at the present market price. I suppose it's coming in in tongue oil barrels. Probably. But it isn't going to get here. When the ship docks, you be there. Get that stuff, and if anybody tries to take delivery on it, get him too. Okay, Chief. You know, I was just reading the other day in the government bulletin. This is going to be a bad year for locusts. Mm hmm especially black locusts. In just a moment, we shall hear concluding facts about tonight's story. Don't forget, friends, to visit the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood tomorrow morning and take on the new all-purpose Rio Grande crack. Remember, this great new gasoline has twice as many power-producing ingredients as found in ordinary gasoline. So expertly united as to give you longer mileage, greater smoothness, and more speed and power. Join the drivers of police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment in appreciation of this great, all-purpose Rio Grande crack.
narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Thank you.